I want to go back to where I ended uh, two weeks ago. We started a series of messages that I called I Can See Clearly Now. And it's the title of my message today, I'm not into titles necessarily, but I guess you got to do that. But I kind of like this title because this one has really been on me for a couple of weeks. Uh, living from an alternate reality. Actually, it's been longer than that, but I've, I've, this has been brewing in me because I haven't spoken for a couple of weeks. So, living from an alternate reality. And I want you to go to uh, Mark chapter 6 and verse 30. And I'm going to start reading. We already read this two weeks ago, and, and I made some uh, comments, but I want to I want to say some things again with where we're going today. And in verse 30 of Mark chapter 6, it says, Then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. Now, if you'll remember the scriptures uh, before this, uh, John the Baptist had gotten his head cut off and uh, some really negative things were going on. And so the, the disciples came to Jesus and was telling him everything that was going on. And I want you to notice again this morning his response uh, to, to what he heard. Um, I want this to really sink in this morning. And after they told him that, and, and John was his friend. John introduced Jesus. Uh, they grew up together. There was a, a real connection there between John and Jesus. And Jesus said to them, said to the disciples, He said, Come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. Man, what an amazing reaction to what He had just heard and some of the things that were going on in His moment. He said, Let's get away and rest a, rock, a while. Someone that is not operating within their identity could not do that. They couldn't rest if they weren't operating from a heavenly perspective. And so Jesus was wanting to get His disciples in this rest, in this heavenly perspective, because I bet Peter was already pulling out his sword and ready to go after somebody. That was the group that He was around. And I'm sure John's disciples wanted to, you know, come to uh, get some uh, uh, revenge or whatever. And, and so Jesus told him, He said, come, come away with me and, and rest for a while. For there were many coming and going, and they, they did not even have time to eat. So they departed to a desert place in the boat by themselves. Just, I, I want you to, as you're reading the Scriptures, um, especially in the Gospels, Begin to look at the reaction of Jesus. Begin to look at the reaction of the disciples because of who they thought they were. Their reactions were different than Jesus. Whenever, you're, whenever you become uh, connected with your identity, the identity of love, and that's what we've been talking about, whenever you uh, begin to connect in your mind and your thoughts and your emotions, with your identity, something begins to go on in you that you begin to react differently. Amen. So, uh, they departed and the multitude saw them departing and many knew Him and they ran there on foot from all the cities. They arrived before them and came together to eat and Jesus, when He came out, saw a great multitude and He was moved with compassion for them. In, in the middle of uh, something very negative happening, Jesus' reaction was that of compassion. And I believe that Jesus is the model son. He came to show us who we were, who we've always been, and how we're to respond uh, out of our true identity. We don't perform, but we respond from the place of who we are. And that's exactly what Jesus was doing. He was moved com with compassion for them because they were like sheep, not having a shepherd. So He began to teach them many things. When the day was now far spent, His disciples came to Him and said, This is a deserted place, and already the hour is late. Send them away that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves bread 
for they have nothing to eat. Uh, now I want to, uh, and I'm going to work on this for a while. Uh, I, I want you to think about Jesus living from an alternate reality. Jesus was operating, he said that he never did anything unless he saw his father do it. He never said anything unless he heard his father say it. So he was operating out, out, of, a, uh, out, of, a, out of the spirit realm, out of the... Uh, out of spirit reality that he was walking in, out of his relationship with God. He was living in an alternate reality from that which he saw with his physical eyes. He was living in another reality. He was living from the kingdom of God that was within him. And he was trying to show us, I believe, that that same kingdom existed within us and that we could operate like Him, that we could move in the reality, in this alternate reality which is all around us, which is in us. It is the love of God. It is the presence of God. It is the life of God. Praise and God. Jesus knew that if He could show us, if He could model this, that we would eventually get a hold of this. Look at somebody and say, I'm getting it. Okay. So, uh, it goes on to say here that the disciples... Immediately, they went to the physical reality. They went by what they saw with their physical eyes. And Jesus was trying to get them to live from an alternate reality. Where living from that alternate reality, nothing would be impossible. Amen. Living from that, from that way of functioning in your mind, nothing would be impossible to the people that would operate like Jesus operated. Man, there's so many scriptures going, I could just quote them like, <laughs> like machine gun. I, I, I want to stay in focus here though. Um, so the disciples were living in this reality. Jesus was living from the God reality. And so here's what Jesus said. He answered and said to them, you give them something to eat. So, so, Jesus was, I believe Jesus was thinking, we've got something. We've got, we've got, we have something to work with here. He said, you guys give them something to eat. And I believe that's what God is waiting on the entire body of Christ to give the world something to eat. I don't believe it's, it's up to one person in a pulpit. I believe it's up to the, to the corporate body of Christ to begin to operate in something beyond what we see with our eyes and the experiences and the noise and the circumstances that are going on around us. And we are looking from within. We are, we are, we are what I said two weeks ago as we get on down in this passage, Jesus looked up to heaven. He, he, he needed His sight restored because of all of the things that were going on around Him. In order for Him to focus and do what He needed done, he needed his sight restored, not from the outside. He didn't need to see anything out here. He needed to see from in here. He needed to see what his father would do. He needed to hear what his father would say so that he would begin to operate from this dimension in a physical body. He was in a physical body just like you and me, but yet he was operating from an alternate reality. He was living in an alternate reality. And they said to him, they still were thinking outside what we saw, what we, you know, they were thinking money here in this case. And they said to him, shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread? Because evidently they had some money to be able to do that. Shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? But he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. Uh, fact-finding mission. And when, it, when they found out, they said, well, we have five loaves and two fishes. And then Jesus commanded to make them all sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in ranks in hundreds, in fifties. And when He had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, He looked up to heaven to restore His sight because He's about, he's about to engage in something from the alternate reality He's about to engage in something that couldn't be seen with physical eyes, but he was engaging 
from the reality of God within him so that he could do something that would be miraculous in this physical realm. Can I hear an amen? amen. He looked up to heaven. He blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fish he divided among them all. So they ate and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of fragments of the fish. Now those who had eaten the loaves were about five thousand men. Things could have turned out differently had Jesus not been operating as a man from an alternative reality, an alternate reality. If Jesus would have been like His disciples at this moment, this miracle wouldn't have begun to be transpired. But He was operating from another place. He was operating from another reality, which that reality is greater than the reality that we see around us in this physical realm. There are going to be people in the days ahead that are going to walk in this alternate reality in a far greater measure and a far greater way than we have ever seen in the past. And we have had some, we can look back at historical evidence of things that have happened even in my lifetime. We can look back and see things that have happened even in my lifetime and even back before people have done mighty works. People have done great things in the earth. I'm just saying to you that in the days ahead, as, cl as things clear up, as our view clears up of who God is and, and, and who He is within us and who our identity is within Him, as we begin to understand our union and our oneness with God, we will begin to perform things not from the outside, but from the inside out. Amen. Does that sound good to anybody? <coughs> It's how we should have been walking all along. And so then immediately after, after this happens, I didn't read this last week, but I want to read this. Immediately after he fed all of these people, immediately made his disciples get in, into the boat and go before him to the other side to Bethsaida while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent them away, he de departed to the mountain to pray. It was a relationship-based thing. It was a pros. He wasn't, like Davy said earlier, Jesus wasn't trying to get God to do something for him. He was God Amen. in a physical body. But he had limited himself to operate as a man so that he could model to us what a man or a woman could do in this physical earth. So the disciples got in the boat. He was praying. Now when evening came, the boat was in the middle of the sea. And he was alone on the land. Then he saw them straining at rowing, for the wind was against them. They just saw a wild miracle. Something had happened in their midst. They had been a part of it. That Not only did Jesus break the bread, but they were breaking the bread. They were a part of it. Of this miracle. Jesus made them a part. He wanted them. He wanted to model to them. What they could do. And how they could do it. But you've got to be convinced. That you can do something. Amen. And I'm going to tell you. You're, you're not convinced in your spirit. You're convinced right here in the old girl. Right in between your ears. The soul. The mind. The will. The emotions. This is where you're convinced. And. And, and, you know, as I'm talking this morning, we've got to be convinced of the love of God. And I'm going to talk a little bit here in a minute about the different levels of the different uh, sections that, that we move through and that we go to and we go to other levels uh, because the love of God is, is, is deep and wide and large. It's big and we're on a journey moving into that. And, and we've got to be aware that whatever we're thinking at this moment, God is better than what you think He is. God is going to become more clear to you so that you can yes. walk out in your own personal day-to-day -day lives. If this, if this stuff doesn't work in my Monday life, then why are we even doing it? Amen. But I'm saying, and Jesus is, I believe He was modeling. He modeled this. He wasn't in church. He was on the side of a hill. He was, he, they were out on the lake. Jesus was modeling something that was absolutely foreign to the disciples, but He was wanting to switch 
He was wanting to turn the switch so that they would begin to see something from within them. Amen. So, they were straining. Now about the fourth watch of the night, something was coming against them. The wind, the waves. He came to them. Jesus came to them, walking on the sea. This always, just every time I read it, it doesn't matter when I read it, every time I read it, it just boggles my mind. And would have passed them by. Now, now let, let your mind go with this. He saw them struggling. He saw them straining. He saw the waves. He knew they were fishermen, but they were, they were in trouble. But it says that Jesus would have walked right on past them. Why? Because I believe that He told them, get in the boat and go to the other side. I'll see you on the other side. That should have been enough to change their thought process of what they were about to go through. Yes. But evidently, those words weren't strong enough in their minds to get them through it. Jesus would have passed by, but He didn't. And when they saw Him walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost, and they cried out, for they all saw Him and were troubled. But immediately He talked with them and said to them, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. Then He went up into the boat to them, and the wind ceased, and they were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure, beyond measure, and they marveled. In their emotions, they were, they were flabbergasted by the fact that Jesus could do this. Amen. Make the sea stop roaring, the waves stop, the wind wasn't blowing. They were, they were, they were flabbergasted. They were just absolutely <coughs> amazed and marveled. Because they did not understand about the loaves. Because their heart was hardened. In other words, they were desensitized to the realm that Jesus was operating in. They were only sensitive to the physical realm and the things that were going on around them. They were more involved with what was going on around them than they were what was within them. And Jesus was trying to get them to switch from their physical reality to the reality of the kingdom of God. Look at somebody and say, I am a king and I am a priest in this kingdom right here and right now. Look at uh, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Paul talked a lot about this alternate reality. And I'm going to just read one scripture here. It says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. There's two realities. Two alternate realities. You can, you can be carnally minded and you can think like humans think. You can operate from this platform, this atmosphere. Or you can operate from a place of love a place of mercy, a place of faith. You can operate from a different reality regardless of what you're seeing going on in the physical realm. But there's got to be some changes in the way you think. There's got to be repentance to rethink something, to rethink it. Get outside of, your, of, of, of the way you've always seen something and allow the Spirit of God to begin to breathe on the Scriptures on, on the messages that you're hearing. Allow the Spirit of God to do something in between your ears. He doesn't need to do something to change you. He needs to do something to get you to think and agree with Him on the basis of what is already true about you. Amen. Jesus was practicing walking in His true identity. He was spiritually... Minded, spiritually minded. Jesus, while in this physical realm, learned to live from his father's reality of love. And, and to be real honest with you, at age 13, whenever they found him in the temple, Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. And then we lose touch with him 
from age 13 to 30. And there, I've been reading all kinds of stuff uh, along these lines. It's fairly interesting. I'm not going to go into it today. But those are like the missing years. From 13 to 30, Jesus said, I must be about my Father's business. Jesus as a man began to understand his father and have relationship with his father where he could operate in an alternative reality rather than the reality that he's seen all around him. Judaism, the religion of the day, the Roman Empire. He was operating outside of all of those things that were going on around him. Jesus was about his father's business. Jesus had a spirit perspective of how to live life. And where to operate from. Jesus was practicing His true identity. Everybody say true identity. identity. How many of you know the noise around you will take you out? The noise that is going on around us. God spoke to me and He said, this is going to be a tumultuous year. He said, you need to stay stable so that everyone around you will feel the stability. He said, you don't need to be in chaos in your mind. He said, you need to be operating from an alternative reality, which is my kingdom. And I said, yes, sir. And so if, I believe if God spoke that to me, I believe that he's speaking that to all of us. People are going to need us like never before. We're, we need to operate from an alternate reality, which is the reality of the love of God. And that's the reality that Jesus, you know, He did miracles, but really the biggest thing that Jesus was doing in His earthly walk, and I want to go over here and read this out of John 14. John chapter 14. Um, And let's start with verse 7. Very familiar set of Scriptures. Jesus is going to the cross. He's giving the disciples some final instructions, starting in chapter 13, after they take communion and, and you know, they're, the guys are kind of upset, you know, Peter's upset because Jesus said, you're going to deny me, and, and there's all kinds of things going on, chapter 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, man, these are some of the richest chapters in, in the Bible, and, and Jesus is giving some final thoughts and some final things that he wants to give to the disciples because he knows he knows that he's going away in in John 16 7 I believe Jesus said it is to your advantage that I go away in the physical now I want you to hear me here it's to your advantage if it was to their advantage that he go away in the physical then it's still to our advantage today that he's not in the physical. That's right. Amen. Some of you, I I can feel the wheels turning. (laughs) Jesus went away in the physical so that he could be here in the spirit. And living in every one of us at full capacity. And this is very familiar here. Jesus is saying to them some amazing things. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you and you're going to be with me and there's all kinds of questions going on. It's very evident the disciples just missed a lot of stuff. Is there anybody in here that's missed anything in the last 30, 40, 50 years? Don't get down on yourself. Give yourself a break. But I believe we're living in a time where things are going to be... Those that, are, that have ears to hear, not on the outside. Those that have ears to hear on the inside. The, your ears are perking up. And you're listening and you're hearing. Those that don't, they're moving farther away. But I'm telling you, because of what is happening with the people that can hear, even the people that aren't hearing are going to see 
the, the miraculous things that are going on around them, and they're going to begin to hear as well. Nobody's left out. Amen. Come on. That's pretty exciting to me. So, so here we go. Let's pick up with verse 7. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and you've seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. Lord, show us the Father. And that'll be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? And Jesus goes on later in John and says, The Father's in me and I'm in the Father and you're in me and I'm in you and we're in union with each other. How many of you believe that? Oh, no, 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 no. The Chiefs just won the game this afternoon. How many of you believe this? <laughs> you are in union with God. Whoa! There should be a little celebration. If I can shout, whoa! I think you ought to shout. You are in union with your Father. Keep reading. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me, He does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly, I say to you, He who believes in me, the works that I do, He will do also. And greater works than these will He do, because I go unto my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do in my nature, in my name, in my nature, flowing from a place of love, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name or my nature, I will do it. Jesus, Jesus is, is, is he's wanting to show them the reality of the Father's love that that whatever other reality, traditions of men, whatever, whatever other reality is going on, there's a reality that is far greater. There's an alternate reality. Yes. And you can live from that alternate reality. It is a divine reality, and that divine image of God is in you. Amen. What if you would have heard this from the time you were a child? I think I might be a little further along than I am right now. I was told for years, even after I accepted Jesus, that I was just an old sinner saved by grace. And what us old sinners saved by grace did was we just sinned. Hello? I think our perceptions... I'm going to talk a lot about this. I think, I think that there are some deep-seated things in us, like we just read about the hardening of the heart. The disciples didn't understand the, the, the loaves, what had just happened to them. It, somehow or another, it, it, it bypassed their circuits. They didn't get it. Man, we just saw a supernatural miracle that everybody's going to be talking about for years to come. And evidently, we forgot that that just happened. And that we had a part in it. And we don't have to be afraid in the boat. Amen. We don't have to just let circumstances come and run over us. Come on. That's right. So there's a, there's a dynamic going on here where perceptions need to be changed. My perception, your perception, our perceptions need to be changed. Yes. And that's what Jesus has been doing his entire physical life in the ministry for those three and a half years. He was bringing an alternate reality to the minds of the men that were there. And then they begin to operate in it. They begin to journey in the process. And they begin to walk in things. I believe we're going to walk in things greater than the early church. Hallelujah. Because our vision is becoming more clear 
we are able to see more clearly who our Father is and who He is in us. And we are, we are removing ourselves from violence and revenge and unforgiveness because none of those things is who we are. We are peacemakers. Amen. Look at somebody and point them right in the nose and say, you're a peacemaker. Yes. See, that's who you are. That's your character. That's, that's your nature. Look at Ephesians 3.14. Ephesians 3.14. And actually, I think I'm going to read this out of the message. Yeah. This is, this is what Jesus was trying to show um, everyone during His physical uh, 33 and a half years on the planet. How many of you know you're not to look to a physical Jesus because He's not in the physical? He's in you. Yes. He's in the invisible realm. I have to begin and I have to end with the love of God. Because that is what Jesus' life represented to the human race. Otherwise, we're going to have about 40,000 some beliefs and be all over the place. Oh wait, we have about 40,000 beliefs and we're all over the place. Because you can't get most of what we believe past the love of God. You can't get... You can't get stuff through the filter of love. It won't pass. The love of God will stop what you're believing. The traditions of men make the Word of God of no effect. Amen. It, it, there, see, what happens is as you begin to come in to the love of God, it begins to reveal the obstacles in your thought process. It, it, reveals, it reveals to us that what we were seeing as you, as you begin to journey in the love of God and you begin to embrace it and grasp it at the different levels that, that we are. And right now, let me tell you, in the body of Christ, people are all over the place. That's right. yeah. and, and, and that's not dissing anybody, but we're all over the place because we haven't begun and ended with the love of God. We haven't begun and ended with the word that Jesus came to speak to us and model to us. But what happens is you begin to see more of the love of God. You begin to see the obstacles, but the obstacles aren't obstacles anymore. Because as you begin to grow in the love of God, you begin to operate from an alternate reality where obstacles are no problem. <laughs> Look at somebody and say obstacles are no problem. Okay. Let me read this at John 17 out of uh, the Mirror Bible. I really like the way that this reads. Uh, let me just read about nine verses here. Having said these things, Jesus lifted up his eyes because Jesus came to show us the Father lifted up his eyes into the heavenly sphere and spoke. Father, the hour has come. This is the culmination of time. Glorify your Son. Endorse your opinion of your Son so that the Son may mirror His opinion of you and cause your dignity and worth to be made renowned and rendered illustrious in order to become manifest and not acknowledged throughout. Within the mere reflection of glory, you co-echo every nook and cranny of flesh on exhibit in the Son's authentic I am-ness. In order that every detailed aspect of what it takes to live, life in the flesh, may be endued with the life of the ages. This life of the ages invites them to engage in the inexhaustible adventure of knowing you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have commissioned. I have caused your dignity and your worth to be made renowned and rendered illustrious. That's what Jesus did. In order to become manifest and acknowledged throughout the earth. 
By accomplishing the work which you have given me to do. Well, I thought his work was the cross. And now, Father, bestow the most intimate closeness of your own person upon me with the glory I shared in your immediate presence even before the world was, which is the love of God, which is the spirit realm. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they were all one together. And I believe at this point in my journey that we were there with them. Now there's a lot of things that probably need to be hashed out and discussed. But I believe that we've always been in the heart of God. Amen. And that is so powerful to me. I have displayed your name, your nature, and exactly who you are with distinction to those whom you have given me. They were yours in the first place. Then you gave them to me. They were yours in the first place. And you gave them to me. They are also those who have treasured your word in me. Now they too have come to know that everything you have given me originated in their own I amness in you. Man began in God. That's what he says. I have given them the very words which you have given me in our conversation, which words they have embraced and have come to know that surely I also proceeded from you and are commissioned by you. I pray specifically for them, those who know that they are yours to begin with and that you gave them to me. I am not here to debate with those who still see themselves defined by the world's system. You and I have been defined by the world system. The church defined you. I've lived my life under the definition of what men said about me. But I'm beginning to live in an alternate reality. I'm beginning to live in Ephesians 1. That I was always accepted. That I've always been loved. That I've always been redeemed. That I've always been in Him. See, I'm, I'm beginning to live in an alter, alternate reality and it's really messing with my mind. <laughs> because we have been so sensitized to living in this physical realm. And we have thought that God is going... We, they thought this 2,000 years ago. The disciples thought that Jesus was going to use force and take the Romans out. And if Jesus didn't do it then, He's not doing it now. Amen. Amen. So, so what happens is, we begin, we've been so desensitized to the awareness of who we are and our identity. We've been so desensitized. Whenever people even speak words, and whenever you hear words, if I say cat, you just saw a cat. You don't see C-A-T. Or most people don't. There are some people that see C-A-T. I've read some stuff on that here lately. But most people, whenever you hear words, see, words are meant to penetrate your mind and to begin to build a picture in your mind. Words that are spoken, but if you're so desensitized, it takes a little while for you to keep hearing something enough you know, listen, I, I had a preacher a long time ago tell me, okay, this was in the 80s, you can preach your, you can preach your grace stuff. You can preach your grace, love, peace, you know, get everybody feeling good, and then about every six months, bring in a hellfire and brimstone preacher into the church to beat the crap out of everybody. You say, that didn't happen. That did happen. Somebody told me that. That that's how they operated. Or that's how I should operate. But see, whenever you do that, everything that you've done for the last six months, you just desensitize by doing the hellfire and brimstone thing in this moment. What would happen if we stuck with something long enough to undesensitize us where we're aware of the realm that is within you? Where you begin to walk in your everyday life aware 
of the realm that is within you. Now, I didn't get anywhere close to being done, but I'm going to start wrapping this up. You know what? I, I, I bet you, and my voice is feeling good, I bet you I could go until about 4.30 or 5 pretty easily. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, did you DVR the Chiefs game? Robin would hurt me back in the back. <laughs> How many of you know we're on a journey? And I'm being funny. I'm not going to keep you that long. I, I'm really... Because listen, this isn't about me giving you something. It is about me giving you something, but it's about you in your relationship with God. Everything that I'm giving you, I am working myself out of a job. That's what the five-fold ministry gift is supposed to do. Is to work themselves out of a job where the body of Christ is the body of Christ. And whenever we get together, we get together and rejoice and celebrate and take communion around the table and fellowship. Oh my God. And it's coming, ladies and gentlemen. It's coming. Now, before, before I leave, I'm going to introduce at least this one thing. And then, you guys want to put up my woman? Now... Uh, well, this isn't my woman. <laughs> this is not a picture of Robin. Okay. <clears throat> I first saw this back in the 80s, and there's a number of things that you can, that you can do with this. But I'm wanting to, as I'm talking today about living in an alternate reality, I want... I want you guys to view this picture. Let me ask you, I mean, most of you have probably, how many of you have seen this before? Okay, so you're already going to, you're going to be leaning one way or the other. So how many of you see an old woman? R lift your hand real high. How many of you see an old woman? Okay. How many of you see the young woman? Okay. Now, And, and I'm going to end with this. How many of you know that both realities are up there? Oh, yeah. The young woman and the older woman. Depending on what your perspective is, whenever I first saw this, they, the people that were doing this with me showed me the younger woman first. And so then they showed, me, they showed me a young woman, and then they showed me this picture, and I immediately saw the young woman. Yeah. So you can be programmed mm -hmm. to see the things that you see. That's right. I'm just saying at this point in time in our journey, be very careful that you're not dogmatic about what you think you know. Jesus told the Pharisees, He said, because you think you see, you're blind. And your mistaken identity is still hanging with you. Because you don't know who you are. I get up every day. Every day of my life, I get up and I say, Father. I mean, I've done it for so long, it's just automatic. Father, I don't know anything. Now, you say, Pastor Terry, do you know something? I do know something. But I never want to come to a place where I'm not growing and moving forward. I don't want to live my life where I'm 58 and a half years old and nobody can ever challenge me on what I think or what I believe. Yes. Amen. I read 37 books this year. And we're talking thick ones. This last year, 2019, you said... Well, Pastor Terry, why did you do that? Because I want to know something from someone that's outside of my church, outside of my camp, outside of my thought process, because I may all I, all I can see right now is an old woman. I don't want to see the old woman. I don't want to operate from a, an old covenant perspective. I want to see the new woman. I want to see the new covenant perspective. I, I can see both of them today. But I, I'm, I'm in, I want you to think about this. Think about your perspectives. And the way you read scriptures. And yes, I'm telling you, I keep saying this. 
Don't throw out the ba baby with the bathwater, but begin to tweak. Begin to allow yourself to expand. There are things that we have never heard from the Spirit of God. There are things that we have never done from the Spirit of God because God says, Jesus said to the disciples, whenever the Spirit of truth will come, He will guide you into all truth. It was good for them, but it's still good for us. And you say, well, I've got it all together. I think somebody's going to start walking closer to that, but the more you get it all together, are you ready for this? The more you get it all together, the humbler you will be. The more you know that it's not you. Jesus knew that it wasn't Him. He humbled Himself and gave way to His Father. The more I know, the more humble I will become. And that's what I want to walk in. That's what I want to be like. That's what I want to be like around you. That's what I, that's, that's what my, that's what I want to walk in as your pastor. Is that okay? The scripture says that God gives grace to the humble. Come on, stand up with me. Message number two. And we're going to be looking at the old woman, or the young woman, or the woman, a little bit in the next uh, few, few weeks. And, uh, I mean, this is really really rolling around on the inside of me, living from an alternate reality. And you say, Pastor Terry, how can we do that from the position that we're in right now? Just begin to change your focus to the love of God. Begin to go into the heights. I didn't read that scripture in Ephesians, did I, all the way? The heights and the depths. I'll get to it next week. The heights and the depths and the breadths and the lengths of His love. And it'll change every aspect of your life. It'll change your family life. It'll change your work life. It, listen, it will take a lot of things. Whenever we begin to walk in the love of God, it will take a lot of things that were negative and it will turn it around to the positive. Because out of love comes joy and peace and gentleness and meekness and kindness. There's an outflow. That's who you are. And I'm going to keep reminding that's who you are and what you can walk in. And are we going to go through some negative things? Yeah. But that's... It doesn't even compare to who you are and what you have on the inside Amen. of you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Father, I just thank you for this day, for this moment. Thank you for strength and wholeness in people's bodies and people's minds and as we're making this transition and as we're journeying, Father, um, as we're walking down this road, I thank you that our eyes is focused inward on, on you and on who you are in us and who we are in you. And Father, I thank you that even this week, Father God, is going to be, we're going to start tuning our ears, not to the things that are going on around us, but we're going to start tuning our ears in to what you're saying in us and where you're leading us and where you're guiding us. And I, and I know it's the, the alternate reality is the way of love. And I thank you for that. Father, I thank you for these people. I thank you that this is going to be a supernatural week for all of us. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Everybody that agreed said, Amen. I love you guys. Have a great week.